Hello there. Welcome to Positive Coaching Alliance live broadcast. My name is Kelly Kratz, and I uh, live outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I'm bringing to you a little bit of our PCA workshops live to you right now. This is a really exciting opportunity for me. I love to do workshops. I have been a PCA trainer since 2009, and currently I'm on staff with PCA. So my role as a trainer is to share experiences and research with coaches, parents, and athletes so that they can be the best version of themselves they can be and to develop, develop great kids and great people through sports. But today, I'm coming from you to you with a little bit of a different angle. So in addition to being a PCA trainer, um, I was also a high school athlete, three-sport athlete, college two-sport athlete at a Division I school. I was an elementary teacher for many, many years and an elementary guidance counselor. But I think the reason that the PCA asked me to do this today was because of my role of mother. I am also a mother of four kids, ranging in age from 20 down to 12. And right now, we're all in this situation where this is tough. We know that this is tough. Your kids that are in sports are, are really disappointed, and they're really sad right now. There's a lot of funky things going on at home. Parents, I want to let you know that I feel for you. I completely understand what you're going through with the demands that you have on you right now. Besides being scared and worried and not sure what's going to happen next, you've got kids that are probably just going crazy trying to get um, you know, outside to see their friends. I know that's what my kids all want. They have disappointment that their seasons have been canceled. They're trying to connect with their teammates and their friends, and yet they have this pressure now to do schoolwork at home, and it's just tough all around. So parents, I wanna let you know that I feel for you and I'm here for you. What I'm here today to do is talk to you about some tools that we give coaches, and the tools that we give are the best ways to motivate kids, period. These tools that I've learned through PCA have helped me so much in my parenting. I can't even tell you, the, the line is so blurred right now, Sometimes I say things to my kids and they go, mom, is that a PCA thing you're telling me? But it works. So I'm gonna be sharing with you some tools that you can use with your kids at home. Number one, as, they, as you're talking to them as if you were just helping them through a daily day with school and chores and responsibilities and behavior and homework, but also just so you can be the parent that they wanna to talk to and they can share a lot of the things that are happening. So welcome to this, uh, to this live broadcast. There are comments down below. Thank you for all the people jumping in. Amanda and Marty and Christy and Casey. Randy, so happy to see you. If you have comments, type them in. If you have questions or anything that comes up, please feel free to type it in. Um, but we're just going to jump in and get started. So what I want to do right now is first talk about empathy. And this is something that's near and dear to my heart. Um, I've studied a lot on empathy. And again, being in education and being a parent, I have learned that the best way to help kids de-stress and really connect is to be empathetic. And I learned from one of my favorite people, Brene Brown. She, all, she said a quote that never, I never, I never forgot it. And she said, empathy never starts with at least. So I know as parents, if you're like me, you always try to find the silver lining in everything. And I think sometimes when you have kids at home, especially, I'm really, my heart is hurting for the seniors right now. I have two college kids that have now moved home. Um, there's six people in my household trying to work from home that as parents, we always wanna tell them, well, it'll be okay, and just hang in there, this is only temporary, and look at all the good things. But one thing that I'm gonna encourage you to do as parents is really understand where they're coming from, validate their feelings. Their feelings are right, it's how they feel. How they handle their feelings is where we have a little bit of say, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. But the first thing you can do is just understand where your kids are coming from with all the disappointments and all the changes that they have going on in their life right now. So the first thing we're gonna do is talk about the overall arch. We are the Positive Coaching Alliance, as you can tell. Um, and we truly believe that positivity works better. And we've got lots of national advisory board members to back us up on that. That positivity does work better than negativity. Some coaches might say, I disagree, I disagree. I have done over 200 workshops and I always have one at every workshop that says, no, I'm a state champion. I definitely am a negative coach. I need to, I have these really tough travel players and they need tough love. Well, what we're finding and what they have probably started to find is you're not gonna get as much out of your kids if you use negativity. And out of your players, out of your athletes, and out of your kids at home. Positivity works better. There's a physiological, psychological, and emotional response when you're positive with somebody. And um, Dr. Barbara, Fre Barbara Fredrickson is one of our National Advisory Board members, and she has done so much study on positivity and what she has found that positivity builds and broadens, and it optimizes motivation, and it helps retention. There's actually no sides, to, no downsides to positivity at all. So if this is something that you're struggling with right now to motivate your child, maybe it's your approach. So I'm gonna give you lots of positive tools that are gonna help today. 
I understand parents that it gets tough and we want you to give yourself a break. There's a lot of demands on you right now. Most of you are probably working from home as well. Now you've got kids that are here working also. You've got kids that are asking you to eat every five seconds and they wanna go outside and they wanna play and you're trying to get your work done. I understand, give yourself a break. One of the things we talk about in PCA a lot is that it's not what you say, it's not what you do as coaches, it's how you make people feel. And I think if you think back to a lot of the coaches that you've had, you probably don't remember the individual scores of games. You probably don't remember the play, the attack play that you had that worked so well, but you remember how a coach made you feel. Your kids are probably not gonna remember every detail of this social isolation. They're gonna remember this as a highlight or low light of 2020, but what they're gonna remember is how you handled it. So parents, you're gonna be modeling and teaching. There are so many life lessons that can come out of this. And I would love it if some people would comment down below. I'd love to hear um, real quick where you're from. And then what are some life lessons that your kids can learn from this moment of time right now where things are slowing down, people are home, and we are isolated from one another? What are some positive life lessons that can come out of that? Because I think sometimes that's always helpful to hear. Um, second thing, negativity. Here's what negativity does. It actually distracts and it takes your mind out of the moment. So if your child is trying to do something, whether it's math homework or something, sitting in front of a computer, it's really, really hard for them to stay on task if they're going to be distracted. So we really want to make sure that we're keeping the kids emotionally healthy. We want to keep their tanks filled. One of our second principles of positive coaching is keeping emotional tanks full because we know as coaches, that's the best way to get performance out of our athletes. So that's what we want to do with our kids too. And coaches that are out there watching, I know there's a lot of coaches, your kids are your players. So please do whatever you can to connect with them. I have kids, again, they're all athletes. My daughter that's a junior in high school is every day checking on their group chats, checking on their um, messages from their coaches who are sending them workouts. It's amazing um, how much fun the kids have just being connected virtually. And doing workouts on their own is a great way to keep them motivated as well. So thanks to those of you that are joining in. Um, if you haven't, we're going to just jump right into the tools right now. If you haven't introduced yourself yet, feel free to let us know who you are and who's on right now. But here's the first one. Um, I have my tools as my high tech tools. Are you ready? Here's the first one. Control the controllables. This is something I probably said a million times in the last week and a half. We are a lot of this is out of our control. And when kids feel out of control, that's when they get stressed. So all that we can do is point them back to what do we have control over? We don't have control of the circumstances, just like we wouldn't in a game, but we have control over how we react to it. We don't have control over the other team. We don't have control over the other coaches. We don't have control over the officials. We don't have control over the government that's telling us that we have to stay home in our houses but we do have control over what we do with it. So control the controllables is, is something that we say a lot in our workshops when we talk about mastery, mastery approaches to learning and performance. So that's, that's number one for me is control what you can control. Number two is this one, keep this in mind. This is research-based, the magic ratio, okay? So we talk about this as a culture on your team, but I want you to translate this to your home situation right now. We are, we have done studies that have, actually we haven't done studies, we've stolen studies from other people that have studied marriages and teacher relationships and athlete coach relationships and found that when there is a culture of five positives to one criticism, and that doesn't just mean things you say, it can be nonverbals, it can be appreciation, it can be listening. When kids feel five times more positives than critical feedback, they're still able to perform. It's gonna keep their tank filled, they're still motivated. They're gonna be able to handle adversity a little bit better. So I think you could probably put that up on your wall somewhere, five to one, I have to remember it often, but we call that the magic ratio. So feel free to steal that one as well, super important. All right, next one. This is something that I used to use in education all the time. I can imagine a lot of you right now, and I've talked to a lot of my friends that have young kids especially, and they just feel like I don't have time to be harping on my kids to get work done right now. It's just not easy to do. So we end up saying no and we say don't and stop and get your homework done and do this and we're giving them a lot of, we're telling them a lot of things to do. My advice is to ask, ask, don't tell. How are you feeling right now? How's it going? Are you struggling with your homework? Ask more questions than telling them what to do. And then when you see positives happening, when you see your son or daughter sit down and make their own lunch or you see them clean their room without asking or you see them just take a soccer ball and go out in the front yard and just start playing around, we want to praise that. We want to reward what we want to see. So here's the next one. See positive, say positive. Say positive, see positive. Okay, it sounds really simple and it kind of sounds like a little poem, but it's so important because we want to reward what we want to see. And sometimes I think as parents and as coaches, 
we focus on the outcome. We focus on, gosh, are they going to get the good math grade? Are they going to get through this homework? Are you going to read that book that I've been trying to get you to read? Now's a great opportunity to read that book that's been sitting on your dresser. That was something my daughter did not want to hear the other night. But when I caught her and I noticed her reading on her own, or I noticed her doing things and I've mentioned it, she's done more of it. So again, this is something that works great for coaches. Say, see something positive, say something positive. And then when you say something positive, you're going to see behavior change right off the bat. So I want you to keep in mind all that too. All the things that you're seeing your kids doing well, think about what your goal is for your kids. You want everyone to thrive in this. We want peace. We want some time. As I said, give yourself a break as many times as you can. Say to yourself, okay, this is going to pass. I just have to get through the next couple of weeks or months and uh, look for the positives in everything they're doing behavior wise. Um, another tool that I am going to recommend is this. I want you to be rewarding your kids effort. And this is something, again, that we talk to coaches a lot about is if you want to see your kids give maximum effort, tell them what that looks like. So if your kids are, um, again, if they're doing something at home and they're not doing it well, anything from unloading a dishwasher to setting a table, I want you to make sure that you're recognizing the effort they're putting in. I've been trying to get my kids to make dinner. I've got four kids. So I thought, hey, let's pick a different night of the week. And it's been making me cringe the way sometimes I see them cooking or doing something or I know it's not right or it's not going to work out right. And I've really been trying to just praise the effort, just like you would at a swim meet or at a cross practice or at an ice hockey practice. You would say to a player, wow, I really love the way you're hustling there. You're not going to say, hey, I love the way that attack player just blew by you. You know, that sarcasm, that drains tanks. We want to really reward the effort that we want to see. So do the same thing at home with your kids. We want to really see them, you know, take the little pieces of what they're doing and praise them for that, which will be really uh, a great way to get more of it. The other thing, and this might seem a little cheeky, but I think it's a really great idea. Um, I use this a lot in my coaching. It's called positive charting. And some of you might say, oh my gosh, I do not have time for this. But you would be surprised how many kids will work harder and do things when they're actually acknowledged for it, when they're held accountable for it. So I want you to pick maybe one or two behaviors a day. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to be cleaning your room. It can be um, helping your sister, helping your brother, taking the dog out for a walk. It doesn't have to be chore related. It can be behavior related. But put a piece of paper up on the refrigerator or get a whiteboard and just put tally marks every time you see your kids doing it. You don't have to make a big deal about it. You don't have to say, oh, yes, Johnny, I'm putting a check mark. But see how much they notice. And when I do this with my um, young lacrosse players that I coach, I might put things on the list like, I see you taking a risk and switching to your non-dominant hand. Or I see you cutting away from the ball so that you can be the second person to get the cutter. And these are the things I'm noticing throughout my practices. And then I see more of it. So if they decide to switch hands and they drop the ball, I'm not keeping track of how many times they drop the ball. I'm keeping, I'm keeping track of how many times they've attempted and they've tried. Same thing, if I see, if I see my child that is um, brushing the dog and I haven't asked her to, and she might be brushing the dog in the completely wrong spot in the yard and there's hair flying everywhere, I'm gonna focus on the fact that she has brushed the dog without me asking, not necessarily attacking. And again, this takes practice, just like we would ask the athletes to practice. Um, this is this takes practice as well. So those are three things under the umbrella of reward what you want to see, and you will see more of it. That's kind of behavior 101. Um, now, the next part I want to talk about is this. What do you do when your kids aren't listening? This is a big issue, especially um, parents that have multiple kids at home, and you feel like a broken record, and you're saying the same thing over and over again. So here's my suggestion. We give this to coaches, too, because sometimes coaches will say, my, my athletes aren't listening to me. They're doing the same thing they've always done, and they're not listening. And we have a couple tips for this. And the first one is this. Make sure when you're giving them feedback that it's not a non-teachable moment. We talk sometimes about what are the non-teachable moments. Um, usually the non-teachable moments are when they're upset about something or when they're angry or when they're frustrated. In a game, it's probably right after they blew that shot or right after they disqualified that race, something like that. But it's just really helpful to um, think about when you're giving feedback, not always what you're saying. So if any of you have tips on that too, feel free to put it in the chat. Those of you that just joined in, we're talking about some tools to help us get through helping to coach your own kids at home. So thanks, Amy and Jeannie, thank you for joining us here. Um, so that's the first one. The second one is be truthful and specific. When we're talking about rewarding effort and praising them for effort, 
Try to just not use, good job, buddy, way to go. Be truthful and specific. If you're truthful and specific with your kids, they're going to appreciate it more. So instead of saying, oh, wow, I love the way you put your shoes away, you know, maybe you could say something like, hey, you know what? I really like the way, I didn't even have to ask you to do that. That was great. Or I love the way I saw you. I was in my office doing work and I saw you sprinting around the house, buddy. That was great. I love how you're trying to motivate yourself to stay in shape and get exercise. So be truthful and specific about what your child or your player is doing and you're going to see more of it. Anything sarcastic or anything that just seems like uh, generic, like, yeah, you did a great job. That's the kids are going to see right through that no matter how young they are. So we want you to keep, keep, uh, keep the positives going, but make it, make it specific. Um, Casey has a question. How should I encourage my kids to go do free play outside? We're going to talk about that in a second, Casey. We're going to talk about um, all the ways to get your kids outside. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, I would I would actually just say real quickly, if anybody has any suggestions to that, feel free to put it in the, the comment box. Ways to get their kids to go outside. I was talking to a colleague of mine in Minnesota today, and he said, oh, it's the weather's just been horrible. So I guess I'm lucky that my uh, I live in Pennsylvania. The weather hasn't been too bad. But how can you get the kids to go outside and do something fun, especially when they're ready to, uh, they miss their team. So many kids these days just have the structure of the team. So we're gonna talk about, uh, a little bit later, we're gonna talk about how we can get the kids outside to have fun. Let me finish with two more things about feedback. So the next one is asking permission. This is something, again, that a lot of us don't think about, like why would I have to ask permission of my kids to give them feedback? But again, it just, it helps calm them down, it relaxes them, and it makes them more open to hear what you have to say. Hey, Jane, do you, have, do you mind if I give you a tip on that? Or, hey, can I give you a suggestion on how to set the table that might work a little bit better? Um, and your child might say yes, or they might say no. But at least you've given them the permission to be able to say, Mom, I got it, don't worry about it. Okay, then take the cue and walk away. The next one, if then statements are really helpful too. Okay, kids always wanna know why. Why do I have to do this? What's going on? Why, why, why? If you phrase something as, you know, if you do this, then, you might see a difference. So you might say something like, if you start your homework at nine o'clock in the morning, or if you start your work at nine o'clock, then by 10 o'clock, you can take a break and you can go outside and you can run, you can go on the swing set, you can kick a ball around, you can, you know, whatever, whatever's fun for your kids. Give them an if then, because then they see the call, the cause and effect, and they're going to be able to really understand why instead of just tell, tell, telling them what to do. And the last one is my favorite, the old criticism sandwich. Some of you have heard about this. I've heard a lot of people in a lot of different workshops call it a feedback Oreo or a criticism sandwich or a feedback sandwich. This is giving feedback to your child or to your player with a positive and then sandwich in a little correction or criticism and then end with a positive. And remember, keep those positives truthful and specific. So your kids are going to be much more willing to listen if they understand that you've actually heard them. All right. Let's finish this out with this. Um, I, want you to, I want you to think about what you do when you have a little athlete at home that is going stir crazy right now. Kids these days, as we all know, are way overbooked and way overprogrammed, mine included. And I remember saying to my kids all the time, like, oh, back when I was a kid, one of those things you swore you'd never say. Back when I was a kid, we used to just knock on the neighbor's doors and go out and play kickball, or we would just get a game of tag together, and it didn't, wasn't organized, and you didn't have to have an official. Well, here's the opportunity. Unfortunately, a lot of them can't knock on the neighbor's door and have them play, but this is an opportunity for free play. This is an opportunity for your kids to be able to get better at their sport of choice on their own and not have anybody watching or judging or keeping stats on them. So parents, let's use this as a great opportunity. Also, parents, don't feel like you have to micromanage everything they're doing. There's a lot of growth that can happen when parents aren't around, probably more growth for the most part. So I want you to think about this. Unstructured time is great for kids. And let them do what they come up with. Boredom is not the worst thing in the world. As long as there are structures in place that you have put out there. We want the kids to honor the game. It's another phrase, another principle that we use a lot. We want you to have rules in place. You can be on your screen. The hard thing with screen time now is the kids are on the screen for school, but there's, um, there's a lot of things that parents can do to put in place schedules, time schedules. You've heard a lot of these things already, but find things your kids love to do, whether it's skateboarding, roller skating, shooting baskets in the driveway, um, putting up a sheet in the basement and letting kids throw a ball into the sheet something, put an old mattress, find an old mattress, pull a mattress off a bed you're not using, put it in the basement, let them jump around. Courtney uh, says, have them make a list of specific skills that they want to improve in any given sport. Sure, set goals for them. This is a great time 
in the off season, that's what I've been calling it around here. This is off season training and you can work on a lot of things. My, my daughter plays lacrosse and she's in seventh grade and she said, you know, I can really work on my left hand right now. And so she's been out every day, just going against the wall or going against the bounce back, working on her left hand. So it's a good opportunity to do that as well. Here's my, my tip for parents. And um, again, I am, I am guilty as charged, but here's what I'm going to say to parents. And this is kind of a relief sometimes. We encourage parents to never push your kids harder than they want to be pushed. The sports that they're playing, yes, we sign them up for them. Yes, it might not be the perfect sport, but if you are the one pushing your kid to get out and practice, it might not be the right sport for them. I want you to let your kids take the lead. If, if you want your kid to say, wow, it's baseball season, you should be out throwing pitches and you should be out grounding balls, you should be out having a catch with the baseball, that's all fine and good. But if your kid really doesn't want to do it right now, you don't need to catch them up. Because when this is all said and done, it's not going to be something that they're going to be behind because they haven't had the baseball in their hand. Okay, we don't know how long this is going to last. And we want your kids to love the sport. And what I have learned from having kids go from six years old through 20 year old in sports is that there is a sport or an athletic event out there for everyone. And the sports that I started my kids on, all four of my kids started with soccer. None of them are playing soccer now. One gravitated more towards tennis, one towards swimming, two play lacrosse. They've all done field hockey. They've tried all different sports. There's a sport out there for everybody. So if the sport they're in right now might not be the sport for them, don't push it to do it. Don't push them to do it if you're not feeling it from them. However, there's no more fun than sometimes going out there and playing with mom or dad. If it's if your kids are playing a sport that you don't know, ask them to teach you the sport. I had my daughter a couple years ago teach me how to play tennis. I think she did more laughing than teaching, but it was so much fun for her to, to just teach me something that I didn't know how to do well. So even if it's not the sport, take a break, ask your kids to teach you their favorite TikTok, ask them to teach you your favorite, their favorite dance move, um, ask them to make you something for lunch. Just find ways, we tell coaches all the time to inject fun into their practices. Try to find ways to make things fun. Themes for the day I've heard have been a great idea. I have a friend the other day that decided to do backwards day and didn't tell her kids. So they woke up in the morning and had pizza for breakfast and then they had pancakes for dinner. So just something to shake it up a little bit and make it fun. Um, that is, that is, that are, they, blah, sorry, can't even talk. those are the tools that I wanted to go over with you today and I went over with them fast, but I would like to leave it open. Um, if there are questions that you have or anything you'd like me to get into a little bit more detail about, please feel free, type it below. Um, just to review again, in case you missed it in the beginning, while the questions are coming in. The tools that we talked about for review, number one is to control the controllables. There are lots of uncontrollables happening. Control what your kids can control. Remind them of that, that's our mastery principle, huge one. The next one is, oh, the magic ratio. The magic ratio of five to one. Try to keep five more positives than criticisms. Doesn't have to be in one conversation, just over the course of the day. All right, and again, high fives work, noticing things they're doing, be truthful and specific, lots of great praise. See positive, say positive, say positive, and you're gonna see positive. There are no downsides to being positive and noticing the little things your kids are doing is really helpful. And the last one, actually, I didn't share this yet. This is one of my favorites. This is a term that we use for culture. Culture we define as the way we do things here. So mom, dad, grandma, aunt, uncle, whoever's watching the kids right now, this is a great one. That's not the way we do things here. If you have to deliver some tough news to your kids, stay calm, have a self-control routine, take a deep breath, and sometimes just the phrase, hey, buddy, that is not the way we do things here. Okay, this is a new normal for a lot of these kids and it's anything but normal. So having yourself calm is gonna be a great model to the kids. We tell coaches, if the players see you calm on the sidelines, they will be calm. If the players see you screaming the officials, they're gonna be disrespectful of officials. Parents, it's the same thing. The kids are modeling you. We don't want you to be perfect. If you flip out because of the situation, that's okay. Show them how you can calm yourself down, you can apologize and you can be resilient too. So um, let me see if there's any questions here. All right, Dolly has a good question. Kids can make their own golf course. I love that. Um, have the parent cut the grass, take a tuna can, place it in the ground, create the hole, clean out the can, place the can in the hole and putt at different distances. I love this. Make three yards in the hole, I mean, three holes in the yard if possible. Make a game out of it. Thank you, Dolly. I think that's awesome. I love that idea. Perfect. Um, Trey, Trey, thanks, Trey. Trey has a favorite quote from Jerry Rice. Today, I will do what others won't. So tomorrow I will do what others can't. 
I love that. That's great off season quote. Quotes are great parents. Start with the quote of the day, you know, put it down in the refrigerator every day and uh, your kids can actually talk about that. What does that mean? How does that help us? It'll help you too. I'm sure. Um, tell me that doesn't shave your attitude in the off season. Sure does. Trey. Thank you for that as well. I love Jenny. Jenny had a suggestion. She said, allow the kids to be the coach and ask them to teach you a new skill, a dance, sport, music. Yes, my daughter has been trying to teach me Renegade for TikTok, for those of you who know, and I'm actually getting pretty good at it, but I think she just has a blast trying to teach it to me. So keep that going. Um, Ryan also says, ask your son or daughter to teach you the sport or give you pointers. Yep, great, great, great. I'm glad I'm not the only one saying this. Um, I think a lot of us have probably learned. And even if it's not the sport, maybe it's a position you didn't play or maybe it's something new that they've just learned. Anytime you're, you can empower your kids to be the coach or be the teacher, they will love that. That's awesome. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, the golf idea. Yeah, Janae said, I love the golf idea. I think that's a great idea. And some of you, again, the, the I had a friend that said, hey, I live in an apartment and I don't have room. And we're the one we talked about, you know, putting a mattress on the ground and bouncing, you know, using that or putting a sheet up or having kids. Um, this was a lacrosse mom that said, I live in an apartment. I don't have anywhere for my kids to play lacrosse. They're not supposed to be outside. And we had, we said, roll up a sock and have your kid throw the sock into the couch. Um, something that's not, that's not going to damage anything, hopefully. But I um, think that's a great idea as well. All right, we'll keep it open for a few more minutes for questions. Um, again, thank you guys for tuning in. We are going to be continuing with these live PCA, P live from PCA um, this Thursday at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. We're going to have Greg Dale, who's a sports psychologist from Duke University, and he's going to be live with us, which is awesome. And then next Tuesday, same time, next Tuesday, we're going to do tips and tricks again from uh, another one of our national lead trainers, Ruben Nieves. So thank you guys for tuning in and good luck. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay sane and honor the game. Thanks everyone.